Good evening. It is so nice of you to come visit me at my manor house for a few ghost stories. On the way over from my office, I walked through the cemetery to see a few of my patients. You know, as a small town doctor, it is always nice to go by and see a few of your patients who have passed on to the far beyond. Tonight as we sit here, I'm going to tell a few ghost stories. Do you like ghost stories? I love to tell ghost stories. I want to tell you about a friend of mine who died last year, Patty McCaffrey. Now Patty was a famous trial lawyer. He tried cases all throughout the area. And any time he was performing, any place you saw Patty, he'd have a blue suit on with a blue vest, a red tie, and a gold watch fob. And in his lapel would be a red carnation. Now when Patty was trying a case up at the county courthouse, Everybody came from miles and miles around. You could see the carriages parked all around the courthouse. And Judge McGregor, he was always honored to have Patty appear before him. Well, one day, Patty was representing Butchie Grant, who had killed a reprobate up there at the saloon in town. Well, he, he really killed him. He only stabbed him five times. And Patty was saying, oh, Butchie did nothing but self-defense. And that's what he did. And Patty had been arguing to the jury, had been cross-examining witnesses, and now it was closing argument time. He had already been telling a gentleman of the jury over an hour and he's now ready for the crescendo. And he said, and now, gentlemen of the jury, you must find Butchie Grant not... <coughs> and he fell to the ground. And I ran from the back of the courtroom and I, I came up and I checked his pulse and he was gone. It was a hush went over the courtroom. Maggie, Patty's wife, come up and she said, oh no! Judge McGregor slammed the gavel down to make sure everybody was quiet and they cleared the courtroom and the bailiffs cleared the courtroom. Mr. Underwood, the local undertaker, comes up and, and he says, Maggie, I'll take over from here. We'll get ready for any kind of a funeral. And that night, before all the people came to view Patty, he brought Maggie back in the back room at the funeral home. He said, Maggie, I want you to take a look at Patty and see how he looks. Oh, she said, Mr. Underwood, no! Patty never wore a brown suit. Oh, 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 oh. Maggie, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Just take me a minute, it'll take me not more than two minutes, just two minutes. Just, you just go back out beyond the curtains and I'll call you back in. And, and so he went back and he did whatever undertakers do back there. And, and he brought Maggie back in. He said, Maggie, I need you to look at Patty and see how he looks. Oh, he looked, he looked magnificent. He had a blue suit on and he had a blue vest on and he had a red tie and he had a gold watch fob and he had that red boutonniere in his lapel. Oh, he looked great. And all the townspeople said, he looked so handsome, and he looked like he was the best trial lawyer in all these parts. And after the three-day Irish wake, after all the people had left, Maggie went over to Mr. Underwood and said, Mr. Underwood, tell me, how did you change the suit that Patty had on, from a brown suit to a blue suit. Mr. Underwood said, Maggie, 
you are swore to secrecy. If you ever tell anybody what I did, I will deny it. I will deny it. And he reached over and he got a Bible and he said, now you have to swear in the Bible that you will never tell anybody. And Maggie said, I will never tell anybody. So he said, what I did, he says, I took the patty in the back and I took the head off of patty off the brown suit and I placed the head on the blue suit. So he looked exactly as you wanted him to look. And if ever, ever you have anybody ask you, you will never tell him how I did that. And I want to tell you that if you ever see an undertaker, any undertaker in any town, and you ask him what the undertaker's secret is about a brown suit and a blue suit, they will deny it. One of the things I know you've been looking at You've been looking at this hand with a bloody arm. This is a story about Mr. Fox. This story came from my grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, my great-great-great-grandfather, who brought it from England many, many, many years ago about Mr. Fox the original serial killer, the story of Mr. Fox. Well, I'm running through the fog like an angry ghost. Let my life slip away. The one I love the most is gone, baby, gone, baby, gone, gone away. My brain is broken and my thoughts 